Hello my soccer universe, fresh off the last home game of the season, it was an interesting one, it was a big one, this was probably the loudest game in the, in the arena, um, for the simple reason, you know, Sturm Graz fans were quite a few here, because they were hoping to celebrate the championship, which did not happen, it was actually a really weird game in the end, because uh, it was very intense, both teams gave it their all, both teams more or less showed that they are among the best teams in Austria. I want to say let's get a little bit more of the game. But in the end, both teams felt a little bit like losers. When you saw there were so weird scenes at the end of the game, uh, it felt really off in a way. But um, in the end, I can already say Lask will finish for sure in third place. I think it is a really good result given the up and downs of the season i also think it's kind of reflective where they currently are i think if you want to push higher you need to get a little bit more consistency in there as well uh, but we also had other decisions uh, we know now the teams that will start in the europa league uh, in austria we also know more or less except for one team a crucial team uh, who will play in the europa conference league playoffs and we also know who's going down. So with that, I would say let's get started. I actually want to start in uh, Vienna, where Austria, Vienna and Wolfsburg played, who might win the qualification round, or as I like to call it, the relegation group. Um, and while the game overall was probably rel relatively even, it was Wolfsburg who were really, really efficient. After a couple of chances for Austria, uh, Wolfsburg really showed how efficient they are because Tijani uh, more or less converted the first chance in the 36th minute. Then penalty was give, give, given away, a relatively clear one to be honest, goalie. Pull, 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 pull him off. Tiana Ballo makes it 2 0, 55th minute, game done at, the, at that point. What was probably not good for us, us Austria was that uh, Piesinger and Borgchi could add two more to make it a proper route. And Austria Vienna, who were actually looking to win this group and looked for a long time that they're the class of this group, losing at home 4 0 and will only probably finish second did not look good for them. Wolfsburg though, they were the other way around. I mean, they were really rough shape and suddenly pff, looking pretty again. So uh, that means that Wolfsburg definitely have qualified for the Europa Conference League playoff, which they probably will host the first leg, uh, the first uh, game at home. Then it's a home and, and, and away against the fifth uh, place team from the championship group. And Austria Vienna also qualify because Lustenau beat Blauweiß Linz uh, in a bid to be still in the top league. They needed to have that win. They needed to win three in a row. They get it against Blauweiß Linz. Nothing to really talk home home about except that Blauweiß Linz now cannot uh, catch either Austria, Austria or Wolfsburg anymore and will also finish therefore in at best in a ninth place. Uh, as I said, Lustenau keep the chance and alive. But not really, because uh, in a uncharacteristic, very efficient performance, that's kind of a theme for the regular round, Alltag beat Tirol 1 0 away from home through a Guggenick goal. Not a game of many chances, and I always felt that Tirol had a little bit more chance chances. However, Alltag needed one point to survive. They get the three, and it's done, and so they can go into the last uh, game of the season, which is the Derby, with a good feeling of having actually won. So, more or less in the relegation round, everything is decided. I mean, yes, positions can be still switch Very little uh, to play for. Maybe the home field advantage for Austria Vienna is one thing to look out for. Austria Klagenfurt played Rapid at home. Actually, were having quite some good, good chances. I think, uh, especially Ermine, I think he hit the post once. At, at least, but I, th I think it was laid down. They created a few chances. Rapid did not have, have a good first half. Uh, at least they could level the game towards uh, the end of, 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 the, of the first half and then a right off the kickoff, more or less. Goal uh, plays in, into Miyulu, who makes it 1 0. There was another chance, and then it was just hang in there. And as I said, Irwin hit the post. Rapid win 1 0. And that put them in a good position to finishing in a fourth spot. A spot. And they have fourth spot because Salzburg, and that was a very important game also for the championship race, also used their last chance by winning convincingly 5-1 at Hartberg, meaning Hartberg cannot catch Rapid anymore. Um, and Salzburg keep their chances of winning a championship very, very much alive. Also, that win puts pressure on Lusk if they would become second. Uh, the game was 
a woodwork festival, uh, despite the six ago, I think uh, very early on after I think hit hit the wood woodwork then Salsa Salzburg hit hit it twice before Simic finally makes it one nil. The two nil by Konate was another we weird one where I think the ball hit the crossbar and then bounces back on his head uh, on his own shot, so it basically assists him himself off the eye with a shot. Um, Pulls him back, but then quite that just before the half makes it 3 1, and then it was just one way traffic. 5 1 Salzburg win, stay alive in the title race. Um, that was kind of their minimum goal, which means now if Sturm would have uh, would win in Linz, they uh, would win the title. No other result would do, and for Lask, similarly, if they need to win against Sturm if they wanted to uh, have a chance for second place and uh, Champions League qualification. Unless it was not to be, I already, already said it, it was a really intense game. It was one of the loudest games in there as well. Uh, before, we also need to talk a little bit about, about build-up. I'm wearing already the old jersey for Lask, although this was released for this season. No, we have a new supplier and I guess this is the video where I should talk about and you know, that will be a jersey re review. The new Adidas jerseys have been released in the midweek. Uh, and let's say that I expected a bit more. Uh, the jerseys, yes, instead of having now uh, uh, these kind of self-made jerseys, which always look look a little bit weird, but at least some of the logo placement is better. The new Adidas jerseys, they have a sort of a professional and a real team look, which is what I was craving for. Uh, when I saw the home home jersey still with the yellow sleeves, this is what I, I was hoping uh, we will get rid of with Adidas. Unfortunately not. Uh, I, I cannot look much past that. And yes, the away jersey with the um, uh, white black with white stripes that the horizontal looks really cool. Uh, of course, the jerseys were sold ahead of, of the game. A hundred bucks? I mean, if your sponsor is coloring the sleeves, I would at least expect a discount. A hundred bucks is crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. But there were other things that, that were actually cool. Uh, my daughter's favorite player, because of his uh, number uh, 30 on, on, on the back, uh, couldn't play because he received a yellow card. So he got fans on duty, meaning uh, an hour before for the game, he, they would step out there and uh, giving autographs. This was announced pro properly and you know my little one and also the big one they were, they were quite excited about that and yeah we got our pictures and we got our autographs uh taken at least the girls not me uh and that added to the fun of, of, of the game it was also brilliant weather the only thing that was not brilliant and it was mea culpa i did not take a cap because we were sitting the entire game in the sun and i thought maybe in the second half we have a chance that we will get into the shade no it got even so bad that the sun was even, 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 even deep to that. Even if you did like that, you barely could follow the action because the sun was there. So this is yeah the fun of being in the family stand, if you would like. Um, I also said tons of Sturmgratz fans there. Of course, I mean, you're about to win a championship. Of course, you're gonna uh, get uh, a lot of fans there. Um, it was even that they spilled over in the neighboring sections. I need to say, the atmosphere was amazing from both sides. There was also had had have the game um, four last players were given a goodbye because they didn't get new contracts, which I always find a little bit bittersweet. The biggest one of them is definitely Peter Michel, who I think came in 2015 or 16 to Lask when we were in the second league and he stayed with Lask. He played a Champions League qualifier and he played Euro Europa League. He was up until two years, years ago, maybe three years, years ago, the motor in the midfield. Yeah. Uh, he is, I think, the the player with the uh, third most games for Lask. So that was bittersweet and they also made a big TIFO for him. As for the game, and let's talk about uh, the important stuff there as well. Um, I felt the game was really intense and it was not a great game in the beginning. Uh, because there was just too much riding on it in a way the teams were trying to feel 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 itself out. Uh, Sturm is a high pressing intense uh, team so Lask needed to adapt for, 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 for that and suddenly you have a lot less of the ball as well but on the other side you try to play it out from the back which on one side worked really well in the 20th minute the ball comes to Uso who then makes a brilliant move going past three Sturm players sending Adil Taui who makes a cross uh, and Florian Flecker completely free can tap it in in the 20th 20, 20, 20, 20 minute silencing or at least for a moment the Sturm Graz fans uh, uh, present in the stadium. 
this could have been a halftime if when you play out again um, you didn't get in into intercepted uh, Laval plays it out to Tal 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 Rierov, who gets who, who fumbles it the ball falls to Biret and the Kittitri from a very short distance can put in it it was an absolute gift and I was thinking oh are we now gifting Sturmgast the championship this way however we could have re retaken it I mean Tia is after corner had a free header and he hits it here instead of here and it goes over the net but I, I, I really thought this this is something that was right around you need to make this this chance but then it also as we said there was a pretty good one for Sturmgast uh, that, that was in before the 1-0 level scores yes the um, goal was a gift but I think that uh, the, it, 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 it was overall all right. After the half, was a chance by Flecker, and then uh, Pras gets the ball, is gains it probably with a foul, re re relatively rough tackle. It has to be said uh, on George George Bello. Uh, he, no one is really stopping him. He plays to kick it is really who with a really nice shot in in the corner. Two one Sturm Graz at that moment they're champions. Have a last show, show 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 the reaction, and you could see Sturm Graz were in a defense only mode, which is really weird for them. And there were plenty of chances for Lask. I mean, there was a, a header by Tears that um, uh, Sturm Goliaros just tapped over the bar. Uh, there were, uh, I think, a, a chance by Ljubicic as well. In the end, uh, uh, Lav Lavale brings a Liu Ljubicic after a really nice assist by Flecker, back by back heel, and Ljubicic is brought down in the box. It's a penalty, 76 minutes, and my wife called it, she said. <laughs> uh, in the 74th minute, she said, the next three minutes, we need a goal. She got it, Liu Ljubicic uh, steps up, converts, it's 2-2. Two -two. I think overall Lask had a little bit more of the game then, but suddenly with the 2-2 Sturm came out as well. They needed to try again and that made for a really interesting game uh, where then after Korkorn uh, Yatta hits the crossbar and falls down. So that, that could have been a title for Sturm, but then also uh, a bearish chance that I really saw going in that Jaros just plucked out this could have been made it 3-2 for Lask this was the last chance of the game uh, really weird also that around three minutes before the end of the game suddenly the police came up in force along the sidelines I guess they wanted to avoid the Sturm Graz uh, storming the field on the other side it looked so weird because uh, now knowing I didn't know at the time that Salzburg is 5-1 uh, up and the way the game is going, I guess they were, were, were preparing, but uh, it looked disproportionate in any way and rather heavy handed, didn't like that. In the end, the whistle blew. No, I was really sad celebrating. Was last new, yeah, okay, third place. Honestly, uh, from a conservative mindset, third place guarantees you a group stage. Um, so in that sense, I actually think third place is good. If you're in the Champions League playoff, um, lose in the first round, you go to the Conference League, lose another one, you're out. So uh, it's a little bit more of a high risk, high reward uh, situation uh, if you finish second. Uh, whereas in third, it's kind of the conservative solid, you have a European group stage guaranteed, which I think is not a bad thing. Uh, also want to mention Stuttgart have now three draws in a row. So going into the last round where they host Klagenfurt, who of course need to win to finish in fifth place to get into the in this playoff there, they said, against the winner of Wolfsburg against um, Austria Vienna, they will need a win. Otherwise it will be Hartberg uh, that will be in there. Um, don't know how I'm feeling about that. Sturm Graz definitely, um, they need a win. But Salzburg are smelling blood as well. So it's still very, very tight in title race. I would give Sturm Graz still very much the advantage. However, there's precedence because uh, in the early 80s, Sturm Graz also had a similar lead when Tulins played a 2-2, lost the title on the last day of uh, the league. So I hope it doesn't happen for, for them again. I didn't want them to celebrate yes, yes, yesterday, but I want them to celebrate next week. And it's nicer too secure a title at home, I would say. Um, in any case, should have Sturm Graz won yesterday, I was actually, actually prepared, I would applaud them. I would have applauded them because um, they have done well. They have done well and I think they deserve this league. Even with the points halved, if you look uh, at the overall record, Sturm Graz would have deserved the lead and should be in the lead anyway. So uh, therefore, I hope they don't do a Dortmund. This is the example that they have to avoid. But 
I think their coach is really looking forward to that as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let, let me know who you think will win the championship. I know most people probably love to see Sturm Graz win it. Um, and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!